Okay, this is a continuation of my battery experiment here. And uh, the iron pyrite and salt water, ocean water, and zinc has been very successful. And you have to add water to it about once a day, otherwise it uh, seems to dry out for some reason. And it's still running, running this motor about three days now, I guess. And uh, it's running it quite nicely. It's a uh, huge success. I might even try to build a solid state circuit for it if I can uh, wind a fine wire coil for a trigger coil on this side. I might be able to get away with an SSG circuit on this because uh, this is uh, adequate, I think, to run uh, an SSG if I can get a pickup to trigger it. Anyway, another thing I found out was this uh, uh, dry, damp grid stuff, the calcium chloride will suck moisture right out of the air where I live. I have about 60% humidity here. It's along the Southern California coast near the ocean and there's a lot of humidity so that wet spot there is the uh, moisture coming out of the air. So I did a battery based on that. Uh, this is a piece of magnesium with a, just a strip of copper wrapped around it. Uh, it's a corroded piece of uh, magnesium and I rubbed the crystals into the corrosion pits of that magnesium and it set up a boundary layer between the copper and the magnesium and produced a battery. And I'm going to see how long this battery here will work just by the moisture coming out of the air between the two dissimilar metals. There's no um, insulator or separator between the two. It's the oxidation that's causing the separation there. And uh, it was interesting how that worked. Uh, once, it, once it oxidized, I could put the metals right together on top of one another and create a battery. Show you how that works here. Okay, there's there's the the other battery hooked up here, and uh, like I say, I don't know how long this is going to go. I'll give it a shot and see how long that one runs. But it runs this motor just fine. Runs it better than the pyrite battery, and I get even stronger stronger uh, energy out of it. It, they're both about a volt and a quarter. It's not huge, but it's enough to work these little pulse motors. The other thing I worked on was uh, the jewel ringer thing. And I took a standard jewel thief circuit and tanked it, basically. And I know other people have done this. This is not unique. This is not me. But what I discovered on the jewel ringer circuits, uh, basically, uh, just put it on a regular old jewel thief. Put a 0.1 microfarad cap here, um, one meg ohm variable resistor, 100 ohm resistor there, and then one of these big 10,000 microfarad um, 10 volt caps on this side. So you've got a 0.1 microfarad on this side and a 10,000 on this side. It sits up like a tank circuit in here, sloshing back and forth tank circuit. And there it is, uh, there it is running right there. And uh, it's a very interesting circuit. Um, like I say, it's um, a tank circuit and uh, what I'm going to do is let you listen to it with the radio here I'm going to rev this up a bit and you notice the battery's not connected there this will actually run on that low blink mode right there for half an hour and uh, I found that very interesting that it would do something like that. But uh, the short spikes are very quick and short. And that little capacitor right there sets up the, uh, the oscillation along with that resistor. And that's the timing part of that circuit right there. It's drawing the energy mainly out of that big capacitor, of course. But there is a sloshing back and forth going on. And uh, it is a tank circuit. So anyway, that's what I've been doing with that. And uh, I've enjoyed uh, downsizing that. I've also been playing with the uh, flyback transformer to make big light, but so far not huge success there. Anyway, that's the uh, show for tonight. It's my batteries, uh, new battery setup, and my little uh, tanked jewel thief. Thanks for watching.